Books and Browsers, it's known to be quite a technical conference as far as things go in this world. Uh, but we're here to discuss something deeper and older than technology, conversation. Um, we're all, in fact, I think, here in our own ways, continuing in a long human tradition of uh, interest in how to have a global conversation. Um, so far back as Mr. Da Vinci, uh, he was dreaming that someday men would be standing in opposite hemispheres, uh, conversing and deriding each other and embracing each other and understanding each other's language. Um. So let's let's start with MacGuffins. Uh, this is a, a term that we've we've uh, borrowed from our friends at This Is My Jam. Um, so a MacGuffin is a is a film term. Uh, it it refers to sort of an object of pursuit uh, that's irrelevant to the overall plot. It's often forgotten by the end of the film, but it. it helps drive the, the, the action forward. So it's the briefcase at the beginning of the, of the action film that everyone needs to get, or, or you know, they're all chasing it, and by the end of the film, it, it, it was irrelevant. You've forgotten that it existed. Uh, the Maltese Falcon, by the end, it's gone. You don't, you, you, you don't even think about the fact that it was there. It just sets up the action. Um, so, so last year, I think uh, our talk here at, at Books and Browsers, uh, we, we, we put up a MacGuffin. Um, we talked about uh, what, you know, just asking questions, what does uh, sort of version control and tools like GitHub, uh, what do those mean in the context of writing? Uh, and, you know, we offered some truly unprecedented insights, such as maybe word, word track changes isn't the best possible tool for giving feedback on writing, uh, or GitHub is awesome. Um, so, uh, but, but in the last year, we've, we've kind of come to, to realize that, that, that those are our MacGuffins. So uh, we spent a lot of time playing around uh, sort of in the, the six months that, that followed uh, Books and Browsers last year. Um, and we built some prototypes of, of sort of lightweight online book publishing systems uh, that looked a lot like Craig's uh, subcompact. Um, you know, it's conceptually very easy, right? You're just publishing some text into some different formats and you're trying to do it simply. Um, it's really about building something that's good enough um, and building sort of the cheapest thing that's possible that fits into the right demographic. But that was interesting, but we couldn't, we couldn't get this idea of what, what does version control mean? What do, what do all of the changes that GitHub have sort of uh, presented to the developer world, uh, what, what do those mean for writing? Um, and so they, they kept, evolving and, and, and floating around in our heads. Um, and we heard people getting excited when we talked to them about the possibility of possibilities. Um, and so we decided to have a go at implementing some of, our, of those ideas. But um, before long, uh, we, we had this uh, realization that was coming up for us uh, based on both our experiences, my experiences editing a book, um, and uh, listening to other people talk about their processes, that um, collaborating on writing isn't about technology, it's about conversation, uh, the real human relationships and the trust um, uh, that comes from them. That's what improves text. So, um, you know, some of our earlier ideas about Git, um, they, they got the premise of editing wrong. So. Uh, you know, we, we just looked for the, the nearest, most similar tool, and we said that's, that's what, um, uh, what editing is, but that's, that's not it. The mode of editing, the, the idea of, of what you're doing when you edit text, uh, isn't to change things and then issue a pull request. There we go. Um, editing is about having a conversation, and with prose, the conversation needs to come first, um, the technological support for that after, um, because the computers can't have conversations for us, besides which um, the, they tend to be very culturally specific, very particular to the individuals, if not the uh, cultural realities in which they occur. Computers just can't solve these problems for us. Um, we don't want to lose the social nuances and ethics um, uh, encoded in 
the the working patterns of Git. That that was what attracted to us, um, I think, uh, attracted us to Git in the first place as a source of inspiration. Um, but without uh, taking a close look at the real world trust uh, that real world editing occurs based upon, um, it's impossible to uh, have any kind of conversation about writing. So when you're when you're working with your editor, it's you know the uh, when a writer is working with their editor, that that relationship is most productive when when there's a, a, a sense of trust between the two people that are that are working on a text. So um, so now we're going to try a live demo. Um, <laughs> let's see if this. There we go. That's that's a good sign. Uh, let's see here. And I'll go like that. Right. So um, this I'll is um, this is Poetica. Uh, we've been working on this as a response to uh, the tradition of editing in the real world, and uh, we hope you'll enjoy it. We have uh, Ben Fershman down in the audience. Wait, Ben, he's down here. He's been, he started this up with us, and um, so we're very excited to be demoing this with you today. So as you can see, it, it, it's, uh, it's familiar. It, it's a lot like uh, having feedback offered to you um, on a printed page. So the idea is to is to really um, create this humane interface, and you can see Ben's Ben sitting there uh, in the in the audience uh, making some edits here, um, and they're showing up, so we can see what he's what he's working on, um, and so uh, yeah, just to be clear, this would be this is a web page. This is a URL you can share with anyone, um, and anyone can collaboratively edit real-time um, in this paper-like but uh, highly uh, collaborative digital format. So, and it is, it is the internet, so we haven't given up on the ideas of sort of the, the actual editorial process. We're not just drawing on the page. Uh, we're, we're actually working with, uh, with text, so if I click keep here, it actually changes the, the text. Um, and it's, it's all like 100% version controlled and it's using a lot of the same technology behind Git, uh, but, uh, but doing so um, with preference to the, to the medium. So we feel this solves uh, quite a few real world problems, uh, providing uh, a virtual gathering place around a body of writing, uh, allowing different voices to respectfully suggest changes rather than enact them. You know, when I was working on my book uh, and editing it with someone I had a great relationship with, nonetheless, word track changes felt to me like when one of those sticky notes was applied, it was as though when you open your suitcase, having gotten it out of security, you find one of those bits of paper that says, this has been rummaged through and changed. Um, so we're trying to, to return to uh, more that, that personality of um, written commentary. Um. So we'll go, we'll go back to the, the presentation. Um, so, so the thing that we've tried to, to really enable, or to, to create, is a sense of joy. I mean, I think when, uh, when we showed this to Richard Nash uh, a few days ago, uh, he laughed out loud. Um, and 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 it was it was really about you know I think if we can create an environment that that's beautiful and comfortable for people to work in but gives them the tools to do the things that they need to do um, then then that we've we've achieved our goals and um, you know editing isn't some dead art that needs to rise again uh, out of technology. We just need to rekindle the, the joy that people take in that, you know, the, the, the collaborative work that, that people can do together. Um, and, uh, you know, Peter yesterday was talking about the status quo being very soul crushing and, and, uh, and this, this, this broken world that we, that we live in. And so our, our hope is that we can, we can, you know, bring some soul back into this. 
Yeah, because um, these processes, um, in spite of the technologies that are right now barriers or uh, um, soul-crushing obstacles, uh, I think that editorial relationships still are quite beautiful, fun, and joyful processes that should be shared, uh, not just in the professional writing community, but um, the larger world. There's interest. Um, and, and we get there. We get there by not worrying about what's come before, right? You know, we talked about Git and word, word track changes, but, but that, again, those are MacGuffins. We're, we're looking at what do, we, what do we think that we can create? And so we thought about the behaviors that we were trying to engender, and, and we, you know, we, we took a, it's a little bit schemorphic what we did, but, but at the same time it's not because, because the, the, you know, the, the little wiggly lines and stuff, those are your fingers moving across the page. And when we, when we put this on a tablet, it's you interacting with the text directly. And when we get one of uh, Mary Lou's uh, Pixel G devices that are, you know, that thin, that the computer just goes away. And so we started with the writing, we started with the process, we started with the ideas, and, and we, let, we let those drive the process of, of coming up with the technology. Um, but the technology came second. Right, so uh, it's all about enabling conversations, getting technology out of the way, and connecting people to do more human work. Um, uh, not disenfranchise them by putting a bunch of uh, barriers and learning curves in, in their way of their usual processes. Um, uh, Richard Nash, again when we were showing him our demo, it's very fresh. You guys are the first audience to see it really. Um, but Richard said that, you know, there are so many underemployed editors out there and this could really bring people together. Um, uh, it could connect those editors to new activity. Um, and there's so much need for that. Uh, it's, it's a messy web out there. There's a lot of editing to do. Um, so it's just about re-engaging these new old processes um, uh, for the web. Um, releasing the blocked uh, energies to um, uh, allow new activity to happen and using technology um, to get technology out of the way, not to solve the problems. So um, everyone can edit uh, from the point of view of a meaningful life. Um, I'm, I'm actually, this is a quote from the hacker ethic, which I'm a bit of a fan of. Uh, uh, from the point of view of a meaningful life, the entire work-leisure duality must be abandoned, meaning cannot be found in work or leisure, but has to arise out of the nature of the activity itself out of passion, social value, creativity. Um, this is very much the energy of the web today, I think, and uh, the uh, box smashing, label defying um, properties of a, an active web citizen. So um, Poetica is, it's not a social media where you go to have an identity, it's a, it's a mechanism. It allows you to express um, your, your real world identities. Um, it's about breaking down the uh, labels or categories of publisher, author, reader, curator, and um, encouraging ings instead, more ings I say, publishing, authoring, reading, and curating. These are the activities that will create a, a valuable uh, literature of the web, literature in the broadest sense. So, um, you know, it, on that, the point about social media, we talk a lot about the idea of flow in social media, the streams of social data passing by us. Um, you know, the, uh, there's, there's a quote that we found from, again, from Da Vinci, uh, the water you touch in a, ri in a river is the last of that which has passed and the first of that which is coming, thus it is with time present. Um, and, and so, so these, these vast streams of, of uh, social media that, that are sort of passing by are, are the present, um, but it's impossible to reason about that flow, and I think we all have that anxiety that, that there's just this constant flow of information that, that, that's passing by, and we're not really sure what to do with it. Um, the, you know, it's impossible to reason about that. But the logic of the river is expressed by the erosion of its banks and the eddies that grind away at the landscape that the past that that express the past and 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 show promise for the future so it's it's the 
it's the, the friction between the river and the landscape that, that generates the, the landscape that we see. It, it generates these patterns and, and allows us to think and reason about what's happened and what's going to happen. And so for us, Poetica is about basically giving us tools to, to be able to reason about all of this information that's, that's passing through and be able to reflect on it and, and create something more lasting, I suppose. Right. Um, so we want to cradle those eddies, those incidental um, conversations. Um, uh, we don't want to be an ocean where, you know, we, we've designed the everything that happens. We just want to support the small activities, assist the flow to gather and, and to cause that uh, erosion that, that will be um, organic social change. Um, uh, I think that it's a, a reality that is um, desired in creative communities as well as the broader web. Uh, Derek Walcott of uh, BBC Radio 3 once said that the thing that nourishes poetry is not an ocean, it's a very small mountain stream. Um, uh, those attitudes will help Poetica, I think, to be a place that really nourishes creativity. So we've tried to make Poetica really as frictionless as possible in itself to give its users the best chance of creating friction in society um, to do as much um, talking as possible amongst themselves. So there are a few uh, places where we're really interested uh, in, in sort of seeing what, what happens. Um, so Wikipedia is, is sort of maybe the, the most obvious of those. Um, so the first time experience that people have on Wikipedia is, is a really daunting and, or it can be a very daunting and discouraging one. You know, you go, you, you spend a bunch of time editing that article, um, adding stuff and correcting stuff and, and contributing your, you know, your, your ideas to that page. Oh, um, I think my mic is maybe. Um, so you, you contribute those, those ideas to the page and then some jerk editor comes and reverts everything and, and you've just lost all of your work and you can try and go back and do it all over again but you have to figure out what the editor didn't like um, in, your, in your work uh, and, and what they might have accepted and it's this really brutal process um, and so because each, each edit that we've, that we've sort of encoded in, in uh, Poetica it, it's this conversational thing where you can sort of say, here are the things that I think should change with this article, and the, the, you know, the, the person who's going to work through those changes can then say, okay, this one's good, this one's bad, this one doesn't make any sense, what are you trying to say here? And you can have a conversation right there and figure those things out, and you end up with this, this sort of, we hope you end up with this, uh, this process that, um, that, that generates something better uh, and, and more uh, beautiful. Right, conversation being more inviting than just the demand to be right or wrong. Um, uh. So, so the, another area um, that we're, we're quite excited about is government. Um, we've, we've actually just hired, uh, it's just announced today, um, James Viner, who, was the, or who is the sort of lead founding designer at the government, uh, UK government stuff, the GDS. Uh, and, and so he's, he's been there for two years and sort of got it to the point where they, they just launched last week uh, and he's coming to join us. Uh, and we're, we're quite excited about that because there, there have been a lot of conversations about government and the, the idea of getting citizen participation in government work, so, so on bills, on, on sort of the, you know, the, the machinations of government. And one of the challenges there is how do you coordinate that in, in sort of a productive way? So we're, we're quite keen to, to figure out all of that sort of thing. Um, it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of questions right now. Right, uh, other possibilities include uh, embedding in blogs, all sorts of places where uh, the, the conversations might unfold. So <clears throat> basically what we're trying to enable hasn't happened on the web yet for most people, um, but it has happened before. Again, looking older, deeper, just human existence. Um, Robert Bringhurst has this concept, he's the uh, typographer and poet uh, from uh, our, our part of Canada, um, and he has this concept of uh, polyphony. Now he's referring to polyphony in literature 
and stories, multiple um, concurrent voices. But also, of course, um, being Bringhurst, he means polyphony and knowing about the world. Um, as he says, uh, if I can read under my clock, uh, uh, we have, in fact, lots of practice hearing polyphonic speech in the world. It surrounds us in the woods. It surrounds us in the street, in the cafe. It's what we hear whenever we can listen to the world. It's also what we hear where people speak with neither fealty nor fear and where their speech is not drowned out by their machines. So we're, we're in, it's 2012. Uh, I know that because it's Bib 2012. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and everyone writes. Um, this, this idea, uh, you know, literacy today means reading and writing. It's not just enough to be able to read. And, and someone who can't, who can't carry out a, sort of a, a productive conversation in written form uh, on the internet is as, at as much a disadvantage as someone who couldn't read 100 years ago. Um, and and that's, a, that's a big deal. Um, and so, so everyone is writing nowadays. Um, but, but the tools that we've given people to, to support that conversation are very primitive. So, um, you know, YouTube comments uh, aren't a, con a, they're not a conversation, they're a cacophony. And, and that's, that's us being internet builder people, uh, letting those people down. We're not creating tools that, that allow them to have those conversations. And there, there's certainly tools that exist, but, you know, they're, we need to be more aggressive at, at, at sort of building those, uh, those places for people to, to learn how to write. So that um, editing can play a, a, a key activity role across the web, not just for editors and writers. Um, so we're building for writing for the web, uh, writing with all of its uh, legacy of processes of self-improvement, um, better conversations. As Bringhurst also said, uh, the mind is capable of that plurality. We are capable of polyphonic thought and polyphonic speech, as polyphonic music proves. He's uh, very interested in polyphonic music. We are capable, that is, of multiplicity of mind. So, um, so that's it from us. Right. Um, we, uh, we're taking up pen, paper, and email to consider again what uh, books are really about, as we all are here. And you are our community. There's a big uh, reason we're here uh, uh, letting you in on beta first. It's because we trust that you'll be able to look at this with uh, fresh eyes, uh, poetica, that is to say, um, conversing with uh, us and criticizing it. Um, uh, so thank you so much. We're going to be much stronger with your help and feedback. Um, uh, we hope you'll enjoy playing with it. And we also hope to um, make the community stronger um, uh, by uh, contributing po poetic and uh, conversing with you. Thank you so much. So I think we've got some time for some questions. Uh, I see Pablo uh, tapping away on his tablet. Um, it totally doesn't work on tablets yet. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, it may, might do, yeah. Um, uh, if it does click events, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, so we've got time for, for some questions. No questions. Oh, in the back. How do you input text? Right. So, so right now you paste it in. Um, so we, we've, we've just built the simplest possible thing that we could, we could imagine to sort of look at the ideas around, around this problem. So, um, uh, so it's not a word processor. Um, and I think we've seen a lot of uh, bifurcation of, of the word processor into a bunch of different tools. So you know, you've got Scrivener, you've got um, Word, you've got uh, I mean, Ulysses and, and just IA Writer, all, all of these different sort of word processing environments. Um, but a lot of the functionality that Word provides and, and other tools provide just hasn't gone out into, into standalone apps. So we're, we've started with a standalone thing. 
uh, we're looking at what word processing means, but right now you just paste in the text um, and you can get an export out and that's about it. So. We want to support other input methods um, as demanded by the user base, so you guys. <laughs> Yes, yeah, we're really interested in, in sort of API stuff and, and uh, we're trying to figure out what that means. So, I mean, you know, I, I think for us this is, this is uh, I mean, we hope that you guys will, will give us feedback and, and tell us what you want to see um, built into this and, and that means APIs, like what sorts of APIs would work for you and what, si what sorts of APIs wouldn't work for you um, would be amazing. So one of the things that we've, we've really tried to do, uh, oh, sorry. Um, so the, the, the question was, uh, how are we going to deal with, you know, if you've got a lot of people doing simultaneous markup, how do you deal with all of that, that conflicting information? Because it's all sitting there on the page. And really, you know, when, when you're working through a document, one of the things that we've heard uh, an editor say was um, uh, that when they're providing feedback, they would do all of the edits and then send the first third of the edits, um, like send you know, a third of the edits to, to the writer. The writer would go and, oh, so many edits, oh my god, it's like the page is full of red. Work through all of the edits and then send it back to the, the editor. And the editor would then send the second third of the edits that they'd already done um, just to, to, to minimize the amount of red that the, that the author was going to see up front. And I think one of the things that we're trying to do is, is actually build the interface so that it it forces you to think about what you're doing. So if you saw the, um, let's see here, I think I can switch. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so if I do a, a deletion like that, it's a strike through. But if I do a deletion like that, I haven't spent very much effort on that. So when I delete, it's just a big line through the, through the, um, through the area. And, and we're trying to express the amount of work that you're doing because that, that's important. So. There's a similar uh, differentiation between close discussion points, fine points, and broad commentary. Um, basically, we designed this by looking at my file cabinet full of uh, written uh, feedback I'd gotten on drafts, observing how people really use the space of a page to have that conversation. Um, it turns out that if, if a, something is already jammed with commentary, an editor will realize they're going to overwhelm the writer very quickly, and they'll, they'll stop writing, so. Um, any other questions? I don't know if we've got any more time or, or... okay. Um, yeah, if there's more questions, happy to do that. Or we can let you go get coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we really hope everyone will uh, visit the link. Uh, there's uh, some uh, stuff to play with. You can upload your own drafts and start editing with uh, people you know right away. Thank you very much. Thank you.